Welcome to episode 10, part 1. Wow, look at the weather. You can tell it's a bank holiday. Right. Now, before I started work on the subframe, I pulled the engine out. Uh, he's on the stand at the moment. Uh, this happened actually after I filmed all the work I did. So, a couple of weeks ago, we did a cam belt and a water pump change on this guy. So we are gonna watch that now. car is up on axle stands, Whoop, zoom in, very good, and we have the hoist ready. So what we have to do is strap the engine up, take the weight of the engine with the hoist, we can then unscrew him or unbolt him from the gearbox adapter plate, and we're going to take the engine out separately from the gearbox. Uh, the reason is it's very very tricky to get the bolts in uh, all of them correctly and torqued down correctly with the engine and the box in the car. I think you really are meant to do them separately. So I don't want to risk taking the weight of the gearbox at the same time as pulling the engine out in case we strip the threads out of the adapter plate. That would be sad. We could get another one but they are £300. So really, uh, it makes sense just to do it separately and not risk damaging the adapter plate. And there she is, all out and ready for work. Now, there's an engine stand in the corner and yet the engine is on a pallet and some blocks of wood. And the reason is, we don't have the right bolts to bolt it up, which is a bit annoying. Um, they are M12, but the pitch of the thread is 1.25, so it's a fine thread. I have plenty of those bolts, but none that are long enough that they'll go through the engine stand and significantly into the block where I feel confident it's not just going to strip all the threads out. So I had to jump on uh, good old eBay last night and order a load. Now they should arrive, well maybe today if we're very very lucky and they were posted yesterday, but probably tomorrow. So we're going to have to start disassembling the front of the engine um, and make a start on the cam belt just with it sat on a pallet. It's not the end of the world, fairly easy to do. Um, what we do need to do of course is flip the engine upside down, take the sump off, give it all a good clean. Now that has to be done on the stand. So we'll make a start today, um, pulling the front off and we will see where we get to. So all I've done so far is take the um, the top cam covers off the front. They're only held on with a couple of bolts. Now, the last time this one was put on, you can see they didn't put the seal back properly. This is all bent. I think it's got a piece of metal running through it. It's all bent and gnarly. So we might be able to save that by soaking him in hot water and try and bending him back maybe. Um, but the rubber looks damaged, so we might need a new one of those. Um, other than that, the other thing I've done is taken the spark plugs out and we've done that so we can rotate the engine. Um, I'd like to rotate it around a couple of times, just make sure it rotates freely um, and also line up obviously all my timing marks. And I don't want it to build compression, it makes it harder to turn smoothly, so we've taken the plugs out. Um, 
One thing I did notice when taking these out is seven of these coils look like this. Um, dirty, but sort of grey in colour, no burn marks, anything like that. And then the eighth one I took out looks like this. He's brown and he's got a huge, you know, hopefully you can see that, crack down the side. So I think he's trashed. So we need a new one of those. Um, there's got to be a way of testing them to make sure that they are that's well out of focus, in good service. Um, we shall have to look that up. But either way, I think that one at the end is trashed. Right, we are making good progress. Um, so far, we've taken all the idler pulleys. You can see the various ones down there. Um, and their various assemblies out. They're all held in with either 12 or 14 mil nuts and bolts and they've all come off super nice. You can hear how windy it is. It's, uh, it's not as warm today. The only thing that was a little tricky to get out was this water housing. Um, there's an O-ring just on this side. This is um, what looks like a liquid gasket. I'm sure that's not original. Um, this has had a belt change by the looks of things. There's all different colors. There's yellow, there's green, there's white all over the place. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's had a belt change at some point. Well, hopefully it has, it's got 80,000 on it. Um, so yeah, so this guy was quite tight. He just needed a quick knock with a rubber mallet and a bit of WD and he's come out quite nicely. Um, so, so far so good. If we look at the markings really quickly, um, like I say, there's all sorts of colors. I've added red just to mix things up a bit, but there's actually a little notch, a little cut out on the back because it's easier to line that up than this little notch on the front. And I've put a little red mark, if I get my fat finger out of the way. Um, on both sides, they line up nicely. And if I can get the camera in, there we go. Now, before you take the tension off, you have to advance this guy to 50 degrees. Uh, that's a safe place on this engine to then take the tension off the belt. So we need to get the impact driver out, get the pulley off. Now, if the pulley is stuck, it's gonna be a quick trip out to Halfords to get a, like a puller because I don't have one in the garage. So <laughs> we'll see how we go. Um, but that's the next bit to come off, take off this bottom cover this tensioner guy down the bottom and then we should be able to take it all out and that is a success uh, the pulley has come off without a pulley puller bearing puller whatever it's called um, gentle tap again with the rubber mallet and it slid free um, I think whoever's done this before has greased this um, so actually it came out quite nicely so that is everything that's stopping the belt coming off apart from the belt tensioner now before I take him off, I have taken some white enamel paint and I've marked the teeth and the belt. Three, two down there, and one up there. Now once I've slapped the belt off and I take this off, I can then transfer these marks. I can line my new belt with my old belt and I can transfer these marks to my new belt. And that will help me make sure everything is in line, especially once we've rotated it, if these marks move at all. Uh, it's another way of just checking that the belt is in exactly the right place. Uh, so, tensioner off. And there we go. He is out, just held in by two bolts. And he bolts in just underneath there. And then he pushes up on this pulley, which tensions the belt. Now we have a box of goodies here. We have a new one of those, we have a new one of those, we also have a new, there, tensioner. Now you can reuse these older ones, you can compress them again in a vise, uh, put a pin or an allen key through the little hole, see that little hole there, to reset them, put it all back together and then once the new belt's on you can pull it out, as you can see, that guy there. But we have a new one, so we'll use him, the belt of course and the water pump and actually we've got the new rubber o-ring and um, the water pump gasket and in fact in the bottom of my box of goodies you actually apply sealant to the uh, the flat face so it is liquid sealant which we have which is good good stuff so that's it right so take the belt off um, we're at the point of no return now because this is all slack there you go um, and then we're going to take the water pump off Right, the old water pump is off. Um, as you can see, oh, zoom in a bit. It's 
lovely and clean in here. There's no oil or, or nastiness, which is great. The pump actually looks absolutely fine. There's no play in it, but it makes sense to change it while the belt is off. The gasket, and we, we've got a new one. We're not reusing this guy. He's a multi-layer steel um, with rubber on each side. Um, and that has left some residue on the block here. So we need to clean all this down. So we've got a really nice clean surface for the next gasket to go on. Um, this all needs, it's all, it's all, it's got sand or something on it. So this all needs cleaning out. We don't want that in, in the waterways. Um, so we'll clean him up and then we'll get the new pump on. And there we go. We've been all the way around um, with a scraper, taking off all the old gasket and then it's been cleaned down with an engine cleaner. A uh, bit tedious, but a lot less tedious than taking the engine out again because you find your water pump's leaking. So, um, yeah, worth spending a little bit of time cleaning it up. It's all coming back together quite nicely. We've got the new water pump in. This guy here. Um, the new pulleys are in, the new tensioner. Uh, now, these bolts, uh, you can see, oh, there we go. These guys here. These ones up here which are also sort of studs and this nut down here are all talked up to 18 newton meters the pulleys are up to 43 um, so this one here and that guy there um, i've also put a little dab of thread lock on the two pulleys and also the bolts that hold in the tensioner as well just because it would be very sad if they shook loose um, i'm sure talked up to the correct spec they're absolutely fine but you know, better safe than sorry. So, I think the job now is to take the belt inside, um, line it up against the new belt, transfer all of our timing marks, and then we can see if we can try and get this belt back in the right spot. Right, we've counted the teeth, and they're exactly the same. That was tedious. Um, with a bit of jiggling around, we've got these to line up a little bit better. Um, one belt is ever so slightly longer, but it's the old one and I think it is slightly stretched. Um, so we've transferred the marks across um, and now we get to put the new belt in. Well, that was a bit fiddly, um, but the new belt is on. What I actually ended up doing was taking this pulley out um, to make it easier, get my marks lined up across the top and the bottom and this was the slack part, and then lift it up and just sneak the pulley in, um, and it was much easier than trying to get the belt over. So that's that. Um, we get to do this now, if we move forward. Like that. Whoops. <laughs> um, we'll have to put the, uh, the pulley on, and then we're gonna crank him over a couple of times, carefully, and see if all our timing marks still line up. Fingers crossed. Right, we've got this bottom cover on so we can see our markings. And I've just done up this 22 mil bolt, the pulley bolt, that guy, just hand tight. And it's at the point where I'm getting some resistance and we can start to turn the engine. So we're gonna turn him twice, carefully, and on that second time, we're gonna try and line this guy up. And we hope and pray that our little red marks that we put on, they're the critical ones, uh, line up. If they don't, we've balled it up. So second time round. And we're aiming for top dead centre. Which is there. Let's uh, take the camera off. 
And there we go. He is top dead center. And if we come up to our original, ooh, that's bad filming, red marks. He is nicely in line. And so is that guy. So that is a completed cam belt change. So what we've got to do now is uh, take the pulley back off. Um, actually, I think you can stay there. We've just got to pop these covers back on, uh, some of the idler pulleys. And that's another job done. And there we go. Hopefully that was either useful or interesting, or both uh, for you guys. That's the end of part one. Part two, we are gonna flip this guy upside down. We're gonna clean the sump, inspect the uh, bottom of the engine. We're gonna take cam covers off. Helps if I film what I'm talking about. We're gonna clean, paint those guys up, new spark plugs, new coils. And there's a big car show tomorrow. I'll film little bits of it so you guys can see. It's in Stonely. I've been uh, every year, I think since uh, five, six years ago. Uh, it's a great place to pick up the sort of stuff that we need to finish up the engine. Things like oil breather pipes of various different sizes, caps to go on, so it's basically blanked off piping. We could, of course, put a bit of pipe on the end and shove a bolt in it, but that's not really how we want to do things. Intake, oil cooler, oil lines, uh, fuel lines as well, special fuel line clamps, all that kind of stuff we're all going to get tomorrow at the show. So I'll see you guys for a quick sort of show episode. I'll show you around Stonely and the sort of things we're going to be buying. And then we'll move on to either part two of the engine or we get a break in this weather we can move on to rust repair fitting the subframe and the suspension which is what i really want to be doing today but yeah we can't paint in this weather so gotta be patient <laughs>